Welcome to Trinity. We're so glad you're here. Hello, my dear friends. I'm Woody Brown, Senior Pastor of Trinity Presbyterian Church in McKinney, Texas. We welcome you to our online worship service. This is the first Sunday of March 2021 for us. Whenever you're taking time to allow us to come into your homes and into your lives through the screen technology, we are very appreciative. Thank you. This afternoon, Sunday, we are having a drive-through communion at our church uh, from 2 to 3 in the afternoon. I hope that you are available and the weather is permitting that you will come join us for outdoor communion drive through in our parking lot. It always is a very special time that as we celebrate the sacrament of the Lord's Supper, we'll do so carefully and safely and we'll be together. Come join us as you can. Hello friends, a few updates and announcements before we begin our worship. Would you take just a moment and let us know that you're here, that you're worshiping with us. If you're watching on the website or on Facebook and you have a prayer concern, we would be honored if you would share it with us so that we can join you in prayer. In our worship today, we'll be celebrating the Lord's Supper. So take a moment, if you haven't already, to prepare for that by uh, grabbing some cracker or bread and some juice or water. Additionally, today, from 2 to 3 p.m., we'd love to have you come by uh, the church for drive-by communion. It's a time when you will have uh, some one-on-one -on -one time with a pastor to visit, to pray together, and to receive the elements. I hope that you can join us. 
Our Creation Care Team is sponsoring an electronics recycling event in a couple of weeks, Saturday, March 20th from 9 to noon to be exact. And we encourage you to prepare for this by gathering the things you may wish to donate. The list of acceptable items is incredibly long and it includes way more things than you might think. Of course, we'll take things like old computers, servers, monitors, keyboards, cell phones, speakers, cameras, but also office equipment such as fax machines and printers and scanners and shredders. And also car and home audio equipment, DVDs, uh, VHS, movies and CDs, plus clothing, toys, games, golf clubs and other sporting items. So the complete list of available, uh, of acceptable items can be found on the homepage of our website or in your e-news. We'd love for this to be a community-wide event, so please tell your friends, and if you're on social media or a neighborhood list serve, please share Trinity's Facebook post about this recycling event. This is the third Sunday in Lent. We hope that you're availing yourselves of the various opportunities to deepen your spiritual life during this season of preparation for Easter. There are three different suggested devotionals that dovetail our Lenten and overall 2021 focus on unity. One people, one planet, one God. Our Christian Education Department is hosting a drive through Easter egg hunt on Sunday, March 28th from 2 to 3 p.m. There are more details about that as well as our Holy Week offerings, and you can find those on the website or all of our other communication channels. Now, it's time to get down to business. Business, you say? <laughs> well, the Westminster Shorter Catechisms says that as humans, it's our job, it's our vocation to worship God and to enjoy the one God forever. That's a wonderful job to have, isn't it? So let us now, in whatever situation or disposition we find ourselves, pause for a moment to create some interior space to lay aside whatever is weighing us down, whatever is holding us back. And let us now worship God with our whole hearts. Just as we accept God's peace for us, God's forgiveness of us in Jesus Christ, we pass and create peace with each other. Peace be with you. And, and also with you.
Good morning. Did you know that Easter is four weeks away? This time between Ash Wednesday and Easter is called Lent. Lent is a time when we can prepare our hearts for Easter and become closer to God. So to help us celebrate Lent, Carrie and I made these egg cartons for our Trinity families. They are sitting outside on the south side of the church under the awning. That's the side with the big grassy field. So you can pick yours up anytime. So there are 12 eggs inside and each egg has an activity for your family to do. So Delaney, why don't you pick an egg and let's see what's inside. Uh, I'm gonna pick this one. Oh, it's a heart. The heart represents the Last Supper and Jesus's time with his disciples when he told his disciples to love one another. There will also be a scripture and an activity for you to do with your family. You'll get to do this 12 times between now and Easter. And Carrie and I hope that you enjoy these activities and that they get your hearts ready to celebrate Easter in a few weeks. Let's bow our heads and pray. Dear God, Dear God, help us remember Help us remember to think about you. To think about you. And keep you close to our hearts. And keep you close to our hearts. During Lent. During Lent. In your name we pray. In, In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Our scripture lesson today comes from the second chapter of John's Gospel, beginning at the 13th verse. Listen for and hear the word of God. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple, he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, this temple has been under construction for 46 years, and you will raise it up in three days. But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this. And they believed the scriptures and the word that Jesus had spoken. Thanks be to God for the reading of God's word. Amen. Think with me now. What excites you? What, what's your passion? What gets your blood pumping? What fires you up? What gets your blood boiling? Think with me. What are you for? What are you against? So often in our society today, we think about the things that get us excited, that make us passionate, that get our blood boiling, and things that separate us from one another. We've spent now some time and the church thinking about this year of one. Year of one, one people, one planet, one God. We're talking today about one God in our text. Uh, I think Jesus tells us today some of the things that he is against, some of the things that he is for. What is Jesus against? In our text, very famous text, Jesus is against 
the money changers, the brokers. It was in that day, that tradition, that sacrifices were made and they were the money changers that were in the temple, in the sanctuary, exchanging money for animals for sacrifice. One translation translates the word money changer as loppers. I'm not sure that's the best translation, but I like it because it's unique and makes me think. The money changers. Jesus was against the money changers. Who were they? They were people taking advantage of others. They were exploiting other people in God's house. And Jesus was Jesus was a little upset. Well, that doesn't quite get it. Jesus was infuriated. He was angry. He was mad as a hornet that people were taking advantage, exploiting others. And so Jesus went in and he turned over the tables. He ran the money changers out, the loppers, and he ran the animals out of God's house. Jesus. Oh, we live in a world today that often says anger is bad. Anger is always inappropriate. I think our text today shows us and actually gives you and me permission to have holy anger, righteous indignation. About what? The things that anger God also anger us. I think our text today invites you and me to show the things about which we are against. There is a Catholic sister, Ruth Fox, who actually lives in North Dakota, who wrote a non-traditional blessing I think it's a fabulous blessing, and I think it helps you and me. It puts words to this sense of holy anger, righteous indignation, this sense of what we can be against things and still be godly. Sister Ruth Fox, her non-traditional blessing is this. May God bless you with dis content discontent with easy answers half truths and superficial relationships so that you will live deep within your heart may god bless you with anger anger at injustice oppression abuse and exploitation of people so that you will work for justice, equality, and peace. May God bless you with tears, tears to shed for those who suffer from pain, rejection, starvation, and war, so that you will reach out your hand to comfort them and to change their pain to joy. May God bless you with foolishness. Foolishness to think you can make a difference in this world so that you will do things which others tell you cannot be done. Don't you like that? I do. Sister Ruth Fox, may God bless you and me with discontent, anger, tears, and foolishness. May God bless you and me with this holy anger, the things that anger God will move you and me with passion to stand against, to fight against those things.
Jesus, in our text today, shows us what he is against. Jesus also shows us what he is for. Jesus is for a new relationship with God. You see, the money changers and the animals were there for a sacrifice, for a blood sacrifice in the old days to prove that we could bargain with God, that we could barter with God, that God, a relationship with God was something that we had to pay for. Jesus throws those money changers and the animals out of God's house and said, no, there's a new way. A new way to have an understanding, a new understanding of a relationship with God. God, creator, redeemer, sustainer, is the God that you and I do not bargain with. We don't have to barter with that God. Dear friends, you are a child of God. We are children of God. And since we are children of God, God loves you and me because we are God's children. The scriptures tell us that we human beings know how to love our children. And we know that healthy parents, healthy parental love, that as parents and grandparents that you and I, well, we would throw ourselves in front of a bus for our children. Certainly. Hope it never comes to that. But we would. Scripture tells us that if we human beings know how to love our children, how much more does God know how to love God's children? Here's the picture here of what Jesus is for. Jesus is showing us that there's a brand new relationship with God, a new way of understanding, a new way of relating, a new way of being in relation with God, that God loves you and me and that we are claimed to be God's children. And that's not something that we bargain for or pay for or barter for. Four, you are a child of God. And then they asked Jesus in our text, what sign do you bring? That's a great question, particularly on a day when we celebrate communion. What sign do you bring? do you bring? In the wedding ceremonies that I have, after the vows, I ask the couple, what sign of these promises do you bring this day? And that's the question for the rings. What sign do you bring? Well, couples, when they're married, they bring a ring, and a ring symbolizing the, the covenant that they make that day. So they ask Jesus, what sign? Show us. What sign? The sign is a body that was broken. A sign is blood that was shed. The body broken, the blood shed, not because God was bloodthirsty or God needed Jesus to suffer. No. The scriptures remind us that there is no greater love that one person can have for another than to give his life or her life for another. Jesus shows us the sign, his love for you and for me. One God, my dear friends. One God creator, redeemer, sustainer, who 
who says to you, who says to all, you are loved. Dear friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. It's not a Presbyterian table. Our host is Jesus himself. And on his behalf, I'm his stand-in, reminding you that at this table, you are fully seen, fully known, completely loved, and absolutely welcome. Join me in prayer. Holy God, we come to your table confessing our own shortcomings and sins, both glaring and hidden. We come grateful, or we may come grumbling, but wanting the eyes to notice and to give thanks for your blessings. We come bearing personal burdens, and we pause now to lift them to you. We come painfully aware that there are so many people with deep needs. We lift up those who are struggling in any way from the winter storms and the subsequent loss of power and water, particularly those who did not have adequate housing to begin with. We pray for those who are out of work, out of food, out of hope. We pray for those who are ill, who are grieving, who are experiencing injustice of any kind. Nourish us at this table, we ask, that we might genuinely be salt and light in our families, our neighborhoods, our workplace, your world. We entrust ourselves entirely to you as we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. My dear friends, we gather around the table as God's invited guest. As Mally reminded us this morning, all who love the Lord Christ and those of us who would like to love God more are invited to participate. I hope that you've taken time this day to prepare bread and drink to celebrate the sacrament with us today. We are reminded what Scripture tells us, that when two or more are gathered in God's name, that God is present. Uh, we believe that even virtually, that God is present with you now, and God is present with me. We take these elements today, just as Jesus did on the night in which he was betrayed. Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after he had given thanks, he took the bread and he broke it. 
saying, this is my body, broken for you. Take and eat, all of you. In like manner, he took the cup. He said, in this cup, there's a brand new promise, a new covenant. My blood shed for the forgiveness of all of our sins. As often as we drink from this cup and we eat from this loaf, we show God's love. My dear friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Friends, this is the bread of heaven. Take and eat. The cup of salvation, take and drink. Pray with me, please. Truly, Almighty God, we have been fed this day at your table and by your hand. We were reminded that you feed and nurture us so that we may be better followers of the Christ. We are reminded that you sustain us so that we may sustain others. May we take this good news of the gospel, not keep it to ourselves, but share this good news with all, for all are loved by you. This we pray in Christ's holy name. Amen. Friends, it's our gift to worship God with our whole selves, with all our hearts, our souls, and our minds, and our strength, and to love God with our treasure. Together we create a community, and those com that community requires that we give into that community. And so now let us each give to the work of this church. Thank you.
We live under one God. Let us unite in our prayer of dedication. Let us pray. Holy God, it is in response to your grace that we present these offerings and ourselves for the work of your kingdom. Let this offering make a divine difference in the lives of others. By our gifts, may the lost be found and the bound be set free. By our gifts, may the hurting find relief and the confused find hope. By our gifts, may the friendless find comfort and the hungry be fed. By your grace, O God, please make a divine difference out of these gifts and the gift of our lives as well. For we pray in the name of the one we endeavor to follow, even Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As we close today, I say thank you. Thank you again for being with us for our online worship. 
I remind you part of what Sister Ruth Fox said to us. May God bless you and me with discontent, with anger, with tears, with foolishness. Now, my dear friends, I remind you the truth of the gospel, that wherever you go and whatever you do, the presence of the risen Christ goes with you. And now the Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you, giving you God's peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed week.